Welcome back. Celebrating Act 2 is continuing in its uh, series of Power Tools for Men. Uh, John? Well, Power Tools for Men, our wonderful uh, eight-part series, is based on the book Power Tools for Men by Leonard Simchik and Rick Bronick, a wonderful book. Um, and what they did is they addressed the issue of toxic masculinity by creating a book, a manual, if you will, a how-to, a wonderful read, full great stories, um, of how to be healthy and a masculine uh, a healthy masculinity to be a healthy male. It's a wonderful read. We've been talking to them about the eight aspects that they've broken it down to, and they use the acronym CLASSICS, C-L-A-S-S-I-C-S. -S -S. We're up to the last C, community. So if you haven't seen these videos, you should watch all of them. You can binge watch them on Celebrating Act Two. But today, uh, these guys are experts in men's issues, and they're experts in community, male community, if you will. And I think it's a really important um, thing for us to discuss because men pal around together. We love to pal around together, but what are we getting out of it? And uh, Rick and Leonard both are experts in the field of what I call men's issues. They've written numerous books each, and they've famous for their lectures, they're in demand for workshops, things like that. So they're folks who, who really have some practical advice for us when it comes to community. Okay, uh, and so we're going to join our community of Art and John and Rick and Leonard. Hi, guys. Yes. Hey. Hi, guys. Thank you for having us. You know, it's, talking about community, uh, Rick and I have been involved in men's issues, as you mentioned, John, for 35, 40 years. And community is so important. And Rick and I met oh, maybe, I think, seven years ago in a community, a men's group. And that's we started to forge a relationship, a uh, bromance, so to speak, that eventually moved into writing this book together. So it's so important for us men to be in community because when we are great things can happen and yeah. that's what we're going to talk about today great 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 so i i, I just want to just uh, share with you that it was back in 1984 i uh stood in a group with 65 men all strangers and i'm wondering what the heck am i doing here and we had come together in Sydney, Australia, to establish uh, community men's groups. And that was my first introduction into being part of men's groups. And it had a profound impact on my life. I, well, this is a group of men that gave me the feeling that I'm here for you. I believe in you. I love you as a man. And really started me on this whole journey and unfortunately, men go through life alone. We may connect when we're working in community, but if we retire or don't work, we often don't spend time nurturing relationships and friendships, and so important. Uh, as a psychotherapist, I often talk to men about their friendships, and I say, well, uh, um, do you have many friends? Oh, he says, I'll hear the response. I've got a number of close friends. I says, well, how often do you talk to them? And they may say, oh, once every three, four months. And it kind of really blows me away that, you know, we're meant to have friendships that we're nurturing and growing. I see, you know, you, John, and you, Art, obviously you're dear friends. And Rick and I are dear friends. And so important for us men to have friendships that we can talk about what's going on in our life, any problems we have are about our successes to be celebrated. And it's having community is, is an integral part of how we're meant to be. And, you know, I'm so grateful for just being in relationship with Rick that uh, I've learned so much uh, in our community when we're with our men's groups and, you know, watching you navigate your relationship with Michelle and and teaching me about 
love at an at a latter age and finding love myself but that started in community so rick i i just uh kind of inviting you uh just to share maybe how community has touched your life oh thank you uh it's touched my life in so many ways i mean before i started doing men's work uh in my late 30s i didn't trust a single man on the whole planet nobody not my brothers, not my relatives, not men in my church, no one. And I didn't even know that until I started doing men's work and realizing how wounded I was. I, I had been by other men in my life. So being able to forge relationships like I have with you, Leonard, a loving, caring relationship where we really support each other and cheerlead for each other's lives has been absolutely life-changing for me. Being in a men's group, nonstop for 35 years has been absolutely life-changing for me. And I have, I feel like I'm a part of a deeply connected community so that when I have challenges in my life, I get support. Like I can't believe it brings tears to my eyes. It truly does. Wow. You know, I think the, uh, the message is that we, we don't have to go th through life alone and we can be part of a council of men and as we're a part of a council of men, uh, our lives really start to flourish. And I know, Rick, you, you, you also are very committed to um, expanding diversity, multicultural awareness. Can you share a little bit about that with us? Yeah, thanks, Leonard, for asking. Uh, I have a deep commitment to multicultural awareness, both in terms of my men's circles and in terms of working in the world. Uh, we call it the power tool of developing multicultural awareness. Um, for example, in my first men's circle, there was an African-American man, a Latino man, a gay man, a bisexual man, and a couple of Jewish men. So we were had a lot of differences between us. And we thought that everything was going to be copacetic and we were all going to get along just fine without thinking about those differences. And nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, my African-American friend, Henry, said to me more than once, Rick, you need to do some work around your racism. If you don't see me as a black man, for example, you don't see me at all. And it kept us from being as close as we wanted to be. So I began to, to do my diversity work. And in doing so, I also learned about how resistant I was to being close to LGBTQ men. Um, I'm sorry, GBTQ men. And that really, really enriched the group and enriched my life in ways that are mind boggling to me. We live in a wildly diverse world. Coming to terms of diversity and difference within is warrior work. Most of us hunger, hunger for diversity in our circles. But when we get in diverse circles, we don't know how to interact with, connect with, be close with, be intimate with men of difference. <clears throat> How we examine our prejudices that come between us and other men. Make contact with folks a difference is one of the ways to do that. Educate ourselves with what those differences are and how they impact folks. Like Henry, for example, after a period of time, was willing to share with me how being a black man in the U.S. affected his life, impacted his life in myriad ways that I never had to think about as a white man being raised as a white man, uh, and also finally becoming allies and co-conspirators with each other. I reach out now and help my friends a difference in, in ways that I didn't even know I could do back then, to use my privilege as a white, straight male to help other folks in the world as they run into challenges that come about as a result of those differences. I believe that that exploration enriches a group and enriches our individual lives as well, Leonard. Well, you know, I think the thing is that, you know, to see all men as brothers. I mean, we're all brothers. You know, I uh, come from a Polish background. I lived in Australia for 14 years. I consider myself a uh, um, Australian Polish American. And part of it is it's expanding, expanding our perception and that all men are brothers. And how can we relate to each other as brothers so that we can um, build a, re a community, a very loving community of men to, to reduce the polarization that often occurs in our culture so that we can, we can actually harness the power, the energy of being men. And, yeah. and, and that's going to take us to the next uh, 
um, the final S in, in the classics is that sovereignty, mm. so that we can all become kings. Sovereignty. By the way, I, I, th I thank you guys uh, because uh, uh, I was uh, typing out sovereignty and uh, I had to remember that it was R E I G N. And uh, after I Googled it, I, I figured it out. So <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, but uh, the, this community, and uh, we sort of in this last seven or eight weeks have formed our own little community. Uh, and uh, you've greatly expanded uh, our understanding of issues that we might not even th have thought of, although we've seen it in other people, maybe we didn't experience ourselves. And that has been, to me, one of the most um, fascinating things about uh, reading the book and listening to the series is that it gave me a better appreciation for, you know, we all say, yeah, you don't stand in that uh, guy or gal shoes, so you don't really know what their problem is. Maybe they're having a bad day. Uh, well, maybe they're having a bad life and maybe they're dealing with issues. And it's just a, a lot more awareness of when we see people that we're interacting with, that maybe they're dealing with issues and uh, we can just be a little bit more sensitive to that so that, uh, uh, maybe we could be a non-irritant in their lives. So for me, this has been great for that. Thank you. Yeah, it has been great. And I, I always like the, um, uh, how you end a chapter with uh, exercises, with stretches. Mm. Uh, uh, practice what you preach. Give us a, one of your stretches for a community. Uh, thanks, John. I'll take it this time. Um, the one that I'd like to highlight is if you're in a circle, research men's groups that are available in your area, if you're not in a circle, excuse me, and make a plan to attend one. If you're one of those men who are isolated or who aren't in a men's group, it's very important to get into community, a community of men who can be supportive and caring and support you in your life and you can support them. And if you live in a rural area, Virtual groups are available all over the place now from lots of different organizations, including the Mankind Project. So that would be a fabulous stretch for a man who is looking to connect with other men. Right. Get to a group. Good. Good. Great advice. That's a, that's a great uh, chapter of the book. Uh, power tools for men, uh, filled with uh, lots of power tools ideas. And I'm looking forward to the next aspect. Uh, as you mentioned, sovereignty. Is that the way to pronounce it? For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.